course, we're also focused on promoting safer driving for commercial and non-commercial drivers alike. Our signature effort here tackles the growing epidemic of distracted driving. I think it's fair to say that this issue is something of a crusade for Secretary LaHood. Now let's face it, if I were to ask for an honest show of hands here in the room, I'm guessing that most of the people in this room uh, would have uh, answered the phone or sent a text message at some point while you were driving. And you're the safety professionals. So it's easy to forget just how unforgiving a motor vehicle can be. All it takes is a split second of distraction to cause an accident. And we know for a fact that distracted driving related crashes were the official cause of nearly 5,500 deaths and 450,000 injuries in 2009. Now, there are some who minimize the risks of texting or talking while driving. I'm here to tell you they're deeply misguided if they think that 5,500 deaths and a half million injuries is reasonable. And they're sorely mistaken if they think uh, that we'll give up in the face of this epidemic. Let's not forget uh, there was a time not so long ago uh, when seatbelt use was sporadic when children were permitted to crawl around in the back of the family station wagon unrestrained, and when driving under the influence was considered just a fact of the times. We've been dramatically successful together in educating drivers about these risks. For example, we've seen seatbelt use rise to 85% from 60% in just the last 15 years. And today, you can be sure that if you're pulled over for, dri for driving under the influence, the police officer is not gonna call you a cab they'll throw you in jail. We know that we can do the same for distracted driving. We've worked together and now have 33 states that outlaw texting behind the wheel and eight states that ban handheld cell phone use for all drivers. The Obama administration has taken the lead by banning all federal employees. That's a workforce of four million people from texting on the road. And as I mentioned, we at the Department of Transportation have done the same for all commercial truck and uh, and bus drivers. We understand that laws and regulations aren't enough. That's why we're also working hard to build stronger public awareness. One of the things we're telling people is to just turn your phone off when you get behind the wheel. Whatever call, text, or email you get, it's not worth enough to risk your life for. We're also starting to see the cultural shift that comes with that. Uh, in media and popular culture, for example, uh, Disney Pixar's new Cars 2 movie reminds us that only bad guys drive distracted. Uh, you know things are changing when you have a message like that for the young people who in just a few short years are gonna be behind the wheel. Here's the bottom line. At the US Department of Transportation, our fundamental mission is to help Americans move safely and efficiently from place to place. We know that accidents will happen, but that doesn't change our obligation to help prevent them. To some, the idea of zero deaths may sound unrealistic. There's no question we have a long way to go to get to zero deaths. But if we all wake up each morning thinking about how to make our roads safer, there's no question we'll keep moving in the right direction. All of this, every one of us in this administration, from President Obama to Secretary LaHood on down, we're grateful for your partnership. We know you're on the front lines making America safer every day, and we thank you very much for it. Thank you. Uh, I'll be happy to uh, take uh, any questions, uh, whether it's on safety issues, uh, transportation in general. So uh, questions, comments? We, we have roving mics, personal attacks, whatever you have. Yes, thank you, uh, Secretary Pokari. Um, the question is, uh, as you know, the baby boomer generation is uh, fast uh, uh, growing older, and uh, so obviously a segment of our population is going to be uh, in, uh, approaching the uh, senior category. So with that regard, you know, cer you're certainly aware from the standpoint of uh, Maryland, what we have done in Maryland from the standpoint of uh, maintaining safe mobility for life for our seniors. Uh, and uh, you're certainly aware of our driver wellness programs and medical advisory boards. Uh, now that you're on at the federal level, um, uh, is the federal government, uh, USDOT, working and doing any research in this area? And uh, whether or not uh, there's, you, you know, there's any words of wisdom or guidance you can provide uh, to us at the state level, um, what we can do? Uh, that's a great question, John. Uh, 
First, I think credit where credit is due. Uh, together with graduated licenses, uh, you've done a great job in reducing the accidents at the beginning of the driver experience. And you all know the data, you know the statistics. Accidents are clustered at the beginning and the end of the driving experience. Uh, graduated licensing has saved lives. Uh, it's really great to see the, the refinements uh, going on with graduated licensing. What we have to do together uh, is tackle the other part of it. Um, and uh, uh, remember, a driver's license is also the ticket to freedom for all of us as well. And this is a really important uh, issue. Uh, I think one of the principles needs to be uh, that we should be looking at skills, not age. Uh, I'm a baby boomer as well. Uh, I'm told that my skills uh, are degrading. Uh, I'm sure that's probably true. Uh, but uh, I think the data should drive that discussion. And if you have a skills-based uh, test, uh, that's the proper way to uh, look at uh, the end of the driving experience. I think from a larger transportation uh, perspective as well, it's important to address it. And by that, I mean uh, that we have to provide alternatives uh, for people uh, if they're not going to be able to drive anymore. Uh, Secretary LaHood and I uh, and uh, other members of our team uh, were in Bismarck, North Dakota not long ago, uh, having uh, basically a listening session. The biggest consistent issue that came up in Bismarck, North Dakota was, uh, was livability. Uh, and, and what that meant, the local definition of livability, meant being able to age in place, meant being able to stay in your house uh, and, and age in place, which in turn meant rural transit. Uh, I mention that because uh, if we're really going to get serious uh, about following the data uh, and making sure uh, that, that uh, uh, at the end of the driving experience people are safe, we have to provide alternatives as well. Uh, uh, transit uh, is part of that. Providing walking and biking alternatives is part of that as well. That's really what we mean when we talk about livability and quality of life and how transportation should be an enabler for quality of life. Uh, it, it's clearly one of our next challenges together. First, thank you very much for being here today. And Deb and I would like to say thank you to John Quo for worrying about our driving since we're sort of the, just, we'll speak with you later, John. Uh, Mr. Secretary, each of us in our own jurisdictions are uh, looking at interlock on the horizon. We'll be responsible for uh, implementing some type of program. And uh, rather than having 51 or more different programs, uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, uh, first, a conforming list of products, and second, uh, an overall certification type program that would encompass all the states? Uh, it, it's, it's a really important issue. Uh, we all know, uh, again, you're on the front lines, you, you know that interlocks work. You know that as part of a larger program, uh, that they can be an essential element, uh, that, that uh, if you look at the data, it's Clearly, it clearly shows that interlocks are, are an important uh, part of it. There is no uniformity uh, in that. Uh, I, I will tell you the technology is rapidly advancing, as, I, as I'm sure you know. Uh, last week, I was in Detroit uh, with the big three and some of the technology that they're working on. Uh, it is clear uh, that, that, that given how sophisticated uh, vehicles are becoming, uh, that having built-in features uh, is not out of the question. Um, what we'd like to do and, and what the approach we've tried to take across the board uh, is, uh, is to first make sure we understand your experience uh, with uh, interlocks and, and what has worked, what has not, uh, to uh, build a consensus uh, moving forward if we can uh, on how to proceed. Uh, we are not interested in unilaterally uh, moving forward uh, on this or any other issue. The, more important way to do it, and I think the appropriate way to do it, uh, is, is to actually uh, work with those of you on the f who are on the front lines uh, out in the states, uh, see if, if uh, what works. Um, but I, I will tell you that interlocks clearly are, are an important part of going forward. Uh, we can all benefit from 
uh, some standardization, uh, which among other things uh, would reduce uh, the cost and, and, and increase the penetration uh, uh, in the market of, of them. So we're looking for your thoughts on that.